Hello! In this video I will demonstrate how to interact with it interfaces in Business Central projects. Uh, in this case I, ha I have opened my Business Central and I have created a very simple project which is named Shipping Quote and in this Shipping Quote project I have a shipment class. What we will do is that um, we will add some technical methods to this shipment class which are the hash code equals and two string methods and this shipment class has been created with the data modeler of Business Central. So we will create those methods external of Business Central and then we will push those methods using Git interfaces into our Business Central. So in order to do that we are going to the settings tab of my shipping quote project and then under the general settings I can see this URL section right here. In this URL sections I have the git option and I have the SSH option. The git option is for read only purposes and as we will be pushing changes to this repository then uh, I will need to use the SSH interface. So I will copy this interface and I will open a terminal window and I will go ahead and click clone from that SSH repository. Now, in order to clone from this SSH repository, we need to use the Business Central authentication methods in order to be able to pull and push changes from it. So I will need to provide this JBoss username that I am also using in my Business Central. So I provide the JBoss username to the same URL uh, that is going to the local host 8001, my space, space name, and then the shipping quote project name. I do that, <coughs> and my credentials for the JBoss user is requested. I provide those credentials, and after providing the credentials, I can see that the shipping quote has been cloned. And if I go to that shipping quote and I list the remote URLs that are available for it, I, I can see that the origin remote is pointing to my local host installation of Business Central. Now I will use a Java editor to edit my the contents of my shipment.java that is under the uh, source main Java and then package name. I can see the shipment Java in that source directory and so I will use, in my case, I will use Visual Studio Code. Uh, you can use, of course, uh, Red Hat Developer Studio, Eclipse, uh, JDeveloper, or any other IDE that you want to edit Java. So in this case, I'm using this Visual Studio Code. And when opening the Visual Studio Code, I will add this two string and the hash code and equals method. So I'm adding the two string method right there. And then I am also adding the hash code and equals methods right there. Like that. We we'll just save these changes. And when I come back to see the status of my Git repository, I can see that the modified changes of my shipment Java file are ready to be staged. And also I have these untracked files. These untracked files were created by my Java editor when opening the project. So I can opt to add those to my git ignore or I can opt just to don't stage them and don't commit them. So that's that's what I will do because my change is is pretty easy to identify, which is just a modified source directory or the modification of this shipment.java. So I will just stage those changes, git add the source directory. By doing that, by doing that, I can see that the modify is staged and I still have the untracked files right there. So now I will create a commit. Um, in order to, to do this commit, I just want you to notice this in my global configuration. git config global. This is the username and email that I will be signing my changes with. 
So I will be signing, so even though I'm authenticating as JBoss in order to bypass, to, to bypass the authentication or to set the authentication of the changes that I'm sending, I am signing my commits as Diego Torres, as you can see here. So I will just add git commit with the comment of adding to string and to string hash code and equals. And if I do oh, git commit, right? And if I do a git log right now, I can see that this commit, this latest commit that I have here in my log, it is signed by Diego Torres, okay? So now I will push git push origin master and when providing the uh, business central authentication of my remote, uh, which is the password for this JBoss user, when doing that, I can also go ahead and see my business central log and notice that a indexing um, indexing event has been triggered by by doing this um, by doing this push through the SSH, which is which is an important thing that just happened. Now I can go ahead, go to the assets and see the changes that were made to my shipment class. Right here, I can see the changes made to the, by adding these hash code equals into string methods right there. So I successfully just pushed some changes to that uh, GitHub repository. Now, what I will do is that I, I will use GitHub to give you an example on how to push the changes from that uh, from this business central into a remote repository. So I will create a repository here that I will use. I will name it just the same shipping quote. And I will use these instructions right here to override the push of uh, my shipping quote repository from my local repository that is linked to my business central uh, with a small change about the name of the remote instead of being origin because because I already have the origin remote which is the business central right if I do a, a list of the remotes the origin belongs to business central so I will create another origin here but with a different name in this case I will give, give the name of github git remote add instead of origin it will be github and then I will provide this URL right here okay now if I list the remotes I can see that I have the origin, but I also have the GitHub remote. So I will use this instruction to push, to, to override the push of the master branch in the GitHub remote. So I will do git push minus u GitHub master, like that. It will ask for my GitHub credentials, of course. And just like that, I have just pushed the master branch to my GitHub remote. So I can refresh my GitHub remote and I can see that all the, the, the repository exists there with all the different commits that were created by Business Central and the commit that was created by me, the adding to string hash code and equals. Now we'll, I will do a change in, um, in my, in my um, business central repository I will do a, I will make a change I will create a customer class here and it will be a really simple class with just an ID and a name
just to create an example okay so just ID and the first name that's that's the only two fields that I will create so far so I will save these changes now what I will do in order to send this customer to github is that I will use this local repository that I have here and first I will pull the changes from my uh, from origin remember, remember that the origin remote is that local host 8001 the business central right so git pull origin master it will bring after providing the authentication for the JBoss user of business central it will bring that customer class to my local so if I treat the source directory I can see that in my package I have the customer and the shipment um, classes defined there so now I can also push to github master I can push those changes and after providing the authentication after providing this authentication um, I can also see in source main java and the package name I can see also this customer class right here with the ID and the first name and it works it also will work as you can imagine it it, it will also work in a backward situation in which you will have you will have changes pushed by other developers to this github repository and you will need to pull those changes from the github repository and you will have the possibility to push them to the origin which belongs to business and that's it that concludes our video about how to interact uh, git repositories and the business central projects